It's a little bit over 24 hours since we lost a very, very good friend in our community, Menashe Hirsch, Ben Eliyahu Akayan, Dr. Michael Rothberg. Um, Levi will be tomorrow at 2 o'clock. I just wanted to share a conversation I had with him within the last year or two. I had asked him as a doctor, is there something you've seen in your career? He was an ophthalmologist, an eye surgeon, something you specifically saw in your career that kind of brought you to an awareness that there's a God in the world. And he smiled and he said he once had an emergency patient come when he was on call in the hospital. There was a young boy who had been hit in the eye with a baseball. And there was lots of blood and lots of fear. And when he ended up removing the bandages and examining the child, he realized that the bones around the eye are very fragile. And when there's an impact against the eye, the bones, instead of being rigid, give and leave room for the eye to move back a little bit. And as a result, there's this little added protection and the kid's eye was, thank God, all right. But he was saying to me that here the skull is such a hard bone designed to protect the brain, etc., from all kinds of things. And right within inches of the skull that's so hard, the bones are like eggshells that are designed to protect the eye and protect from impact. So that's a designer that's only Hashem. So anyways, sharing that a little bit, that thought for his neshama. I want to share a very quick story. This took place with one of the Alter Rebbe's great-grandchildren, Rav Mordechai Doiv, who himself was a Rebbe, and a not-yet-religious Jew. It's probably a very good use of the term. A not-yet-religious Jew who at the time was anti-religious, came to the Rebbe, was kind of surprised why he's coming to the Rebbe, and he said recently in his village there was a, a boat capsized and it was an unidentified body, and therefore it was buried in a pauper's grave somewhere in the local cemetery, and then a few weeks later it was discovered that there was a Jew who was on that boat who had disappeared. And they realized this was that unidentified body that had been buried in the not-Jewish cemetery. And it became a whole big deal until finally the body was reburied in the Jewish cemetery. So he says to the Rebbe, I have my reasons why I don't choose to live like a Jew. But I certainly want to be buried among Jews when I pass away. What can I do to make sure that what happened to this poor guy shouldn't happen to me? So the Rebbe said to him, if you'll wear tzitzit under your shirt, tucked in, no one will see it, it won't ruin your reputation, but God forbid when the time comes, it'll be obvious that you're Jewish and you'll be buried among Jews. So the guy thought that was a brilliant idea and he thanked the Rebbe and the next day he bought tzitzit and he put them on under his shirt, no one should ever see, he tucked them in carefully and he walked around happy camper. Well either surprisingly or not surprisingly. With time, he began to keep kosher and make blessings, and then he began to keep Shabbos, and eventually he became a, a full-fledged observing Jew. Our rabbis tell us in Rikhi Avot, says mitzvah, whatever is mitzvah, a mitzvah brings another mitzvah in its train, and action means something. We all know there's 613 mitzvahs in the Torah. Not everyone realizes that only six of them 1% address our heart and our mind, as in believing in Hashem, and fearing Hashem, and loving Hashem, etc. But the other 607 are all actions. Do something. Do something because by doing something, you will become something. You'll become a very good person. May we all add mitzvahs in our life and add in our connection to Hashem. Have a great week.